Good morning. I'm so glad that you're joining me this morning. Um, today we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we're seeking to understand the world that David grew up in. Yesterday we talked about the word illusion. That's going to be a word that we're going to be thinking a lot about this week. And today we're going to try to glimpse God's perspective on the removal of Saul as king of Israel. Because God looks not at the outer appearance of a man, but God sees the heart. And he knew the heart of Saul, and he knew that Saul's disobedience disqualified him from remaining king. So today we're going to just kind of wrap our minds about, around this idea that God sees things very differently than we do. He sees our hearts. If you look at verse 1 in uh, chapter 16, it says, The Lord said to Samuel, so Samuel the prophet was grieving over the fact that Saul would not become king any longer. And so the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? So Samuel was distressed. He was so distressed over Saul's failures because he was the one who spoke God's words of judgment to Saul after his foolishness and disobedience to God. When God pronounced his grief over making Saul king, the chapter 15, verse 12 tells us that, that Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all night long. Literally, he's heartbroken. He's heartbroken about the disobedient decisions that Saul has made. You know, he has known Saul from the very beginning. He knew Saul when he was a tall, humble, shy, handsome guy. And um, God, he, God's choice of Saul to be king, Samuel knew, was a God-sized calling upon his life. But it was also associated with a God-sized equipping by the Holy Spirit. So Saul had supernatural respect from the people, and he had a supernatural power to execute victory in the battles that Israel fought against their enemies. But Saul's failure was to bring his will into alignment with God's command, and that failure cost him the throne. And for that, we find that Samuel begins this chapter by being deeply, deeply grieved. And I, I want to think about our own lives for a minute. Have you ever felt really grieved over someone else's life choices? You know, maybe it's a, a son or a daughter that you have, you have known them since they were young. You have seen them in all their potential. And you watch them, maybe in their teenage years, making decisions that are just bringing hardship and destruction to their lives. And you know what they could become, but you're so deeply grieved. Or maybe you've been married to a spouse who strays in the marriage, who makes a lot of decisions that breaks the covenant of marriage and breaks your heart in the process. And you know what your marriage could become. You know what it was when you were young and when you were first in love. And it just grieves you to the bone to see a decision after decision being made that rips apart something that could have been so beautiful. You know, people flush their plan, the plans that for their lives in all kinds of ways of disobedience. It could be disobedience to the law. It could be through addiction or substance abuse or poor choices or uh, circling up with the wrong friend groups. And it's truly heartbreaking when you watch somebody go through that. And this is how Samuel feels. But the Lord tells him that it's time to press on. There is a time for grieving and there's a time to press on. Um, and the reason is that Saul's rejection has actually now paved the way for David's selection. So God has rejected Saul, but it's actually opened the door for David to be chosen, to be selected as the next king. It's interesting because this idea of rejection has actually been a really strong theme in the book of 1 Samuel for the Israelites. Uh, rejection has been really prevalent in their story. Because um, in, in this story, God reminds, he's reminding Samuel that the people actually have not rejected Samuel's leadership over Israel. Uh, they're, they're actually rejecting his leadership, God's leadership over Israel. If we turn back in our Bibles, if you turn back to 1 Samuel chapter 8, in verse 7, is when we first hear the Lord speaking to Samuel about this idea of rejection. The Lord said to Samuel, he said this, he said, Obey the voice of the people in all they say, say to you. They have not rejected you, Samuel. They have rejected me from being king over them. 
So when the people were rejecting Samuel and his sons as judges over Israel, the people were in fact rejecting God as their king, including that their whole theocratic system of government. Now this idea of rejection was repeated because then if you turn to 1 Samuel chapter 10 in verse 19, God says, but today you have rejected your God who saves you from all calamities and your distresses. And you have said to him, set a king over us. So Samuel was warning the people that when they were crying out for king, they were rejecting God again. And they were saying, give us a human king. And then again, if you fast forward to uh, chapter 15, verse 26, we see Samuel's final words to Saul, where he says, um, he, Samuel tells Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. You see, there are consequences to disobedience. And for Saul, that meant being rejected as an instrument for God's kingdom purposes. He was no longer going to have that privilege. But God's plans and purposes are, are never thwarted by human failure because God has a bigger plan. So when we fail, or when we're disobedient, God's plans and purposes aren't thwarted. We may miss the opportunity to be a part of his plans and purposes, but his plans will continue. And as we see, there is another chosen to be king, and this is going to be a man after God's own heart. Now, tomorrow when we open scripture, we're going to get to meet David for the first time because God is going to send Samuel out to meet David. But today, I'd just love to invite you to think with me, is there a time in your life when you truly thought that God's plans and purposes for you were thwarted by a failure? Maybe it was a failure in marriage or failure in your career or fa failure in your education or a failure in how you grew up or a decision that you made or something that happened to you. It could be a, your failure or it could be a failure by someone who's in your proximate life or family. You know, how did you later then see God using that failure for a greater good? How did you, can you look back on that situation and see that he reached into that and he redeemed it for a greater purpose? Maybe you're in the midst of a failure today and you can't see any good coming out of it. Well, I want to just pray today that today God might reveal some hope in the midst of your disappointing circumstances. Let me pray for us. Father, we come before you today and we just confess that we don't always understand how your plans and purposes work. We're often very confused. We're in the midst of emotionally charged situation, really painful relationships or circumstances in our lives. And there's just times when we feel really despairing about life. But we can look back to your relationship with your people and see how faithful you are time and time again. How once the moment passes, there is there is a clear sense that your plans and purposes will continue, that you are able like none other to reach into the most broken and painful circumstances and in, in a miraculous way, use them for our good and your glory. And so we're thankful for how you uh, restored the kingdom of Israel through the leadership of David, which we're gonna get to see as we open your word together. But we also trust that in our own lives, you are going to restore the broken places of our lives and bring something really good out of them. We believe that, and we do because we believe in Jesus, and we ask that you would help us, Lord, to move forward in our days with encouragement today. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning, and I'm excited because tomorrow, we're actually going to see what happens when the prophet Samuel goes to the house of Jesse and meets David for the first time. So I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you then.